Acer, a company well known for making PCs that people own for max like a year and a half before throwing straight in a river. I guess that's not quite fair. Some of their monitors and laptops aren't terrible. But anyway, they've decided to dip their toes into the world of graphics cards with this very interesting cooler design. I guess they're trying to overcome the hermetically sealed case designs they're known for. Let's see how it works out. Now, when it comes to graphics card cooler designs, the two most popular ones are blower and open air coolers. Now, a blower design like this one here works really well in low airflow environments because you've got a single fan sucking in air and farting it out the back of the enclosed shroud design. It dumps most of its heat outside of the case. They also have a reputation for getting real noisy. <laughs> Whereas open air designs provide a lot of potential cooling with all their fans and space for air to move around. But if they're in a low airflow environment, they're just gonna dump all the heat into the case and all of your components are gonna catch on fire. Now Acer decided to combine both these cooler designs. I'm guessing with the intention of getting the benefits of both designs. But from what I'm seeing here, it looks more like we're gonna get the downsides of both designs. But again, we'll see how it turns out. Uh, this is quite nice packaging. You've got the sleeve and then a very fancy box that like pops open like that. And there it is, whoa. That is a pretty cool looking GPU. And there is our Acer GPU in all its glory. Here's our coax fan, which is very common on modern GPU designs. And then down here, we've got our blower fan, which I'm guessing is here for the sole purpose of adding that distinct howl. Now, the reason that I don't think this is a particularly good idea is that because of what's happening here with the coax design, the open air shroud and what's going on on the back here, you're still gonna be dumping a bunch of heat into your case. You just also have a loud blower fan on here. But again, I'm sure the engineers at Acer are way smarter than I am. So maybe this works out. I'm very excited to test it. That's actually a metal backplate with a bunch of Predator on the back so you can fantasize about being Arnold Schwarzenegger covered in mud in a jungle. There is this kind of frosted plastic on the cooler shroud, which I quite like the way it looks. I mean, generally, I think this is a pretty cool looking graphics card. And this is an RX 7600, which isn't a super high TDP GPU. So just going by the size of it, even if the design isn't very good, I think the temperatures are gonna be fine. And then in terms of IO, it's just a modern graphics card. But with that, I'm gonna go test it now, but you get to see into the future where we take the cooler off and have a closer look at its internal design. Okay, well, it's finally time to tear down our Hannah Montana graphics card. It's the best of both worlds. So you just lift that off and then th there are a couple more screws hiding underneath here. A so many connectors. Three, yay. We've got like a copper contact plate, which not only touches the GPU, but also the memory. And then there's a lot of thermal pad making contact with the power delivery. There are four medium-sized heat pipes, I'd call those. It is quite a hefty cooler, uh, and considering that this is just a 7600, I'm sure temperatures are gonna be fine, but we'll see, we'll see in a bit. Whoa, that 7600 die has a surprising amount of chrome bling on it. Uh, next to that, we've got our eight gigs of video memory and a power delivery that's not a complete abomination. I mean, for the price, you'd kinda hope that it's not completely bare bones, but we'll talk about that later. Now, starting with Battlefield 5 at 1080p ultra settings, you can see that temperature-wise, the problem seems to be the CPU more than the graphics card. Uh, but I'm gonna run it for a while and see how, how hot the graphics card gets. And after half an hour and a quick crash, we finally got our temperature result. So this is after quite a while of gaming. Granted, there was like a crash <laughs> in the middle of it, uh, but this is about where the temperatures topped out. Uh, the CPU has stabilized quite a bit, so that's good. And uh, the GPU is really not running very poorly in terms of temperatures. And it's drawing a decent amount of power as well. 
So I do owe Acer an apology, it seems, because the cooler is doing fine. Now Cyberpunk, a game that doesn't have the same inappropriate adult feelings for AMD graphics cards as Battlefield 5 does, at high settings is running very well on this 7600. Uh, temperatures are good, we're getting a lot of frame rate. It feels great, like this is, this is a good gaming experience. Wait, did it just... It just crashed again, didn't it? Cyberpunk crashed a lot, especially the built-in benchmark bit. I could only get it to finish once out of like eight tries. Other games like The Last of Us seemed more stable, but there was definitely something weird going on with this system. So I decided to take the graphics card and drop it in my open air test bed. But Cyberpunk still kept crashing. So it seems like Acer has continued their trend of injecting Alma into all of their products, even in their graphics cards. Very exciting. Alma realization aside, I decided to drop an RTX 3060 in this system because it's currently the most popular graphics card in the world to see how these two GPUs compared. Now I've been playing Battlefield 5 for a while now and interestingly, the RTX 3060 seems to be drawing a very similar amount of power while gaming and it's got a normal open air cooler. Temperature wise, it seems to be doing a little bit better, but the ambient temperature has dropped by about that amount. So yeah, very similar temperatures between the two cards, which isn't impressive by any means because this is one of the most basic coolers you get on a 3060. Frame rate wise, the 7600 is a decent step up over the 3060 in Battlefield 5, but again, as we mentioned before, Battlefield 5 is a real thing for AMD graphics cards. Interestingly, in Cyberpunk, there's if anything, a bigger delta in frame rate between the two GPUs than there was in Battlefield 5, which is kind of weird because that's not usually the case for this game. Aside from the whole constant crashing thing, Cyberpunk feels quite a bit better on the 7600. And the trend continues with The Last of Us. I mean, you would really hope that the 7600 is faster than the 3060 because it's got like an entire generation on that card. But yeah, it feels quite a bit better in these more demanding games. So with that, it's time to test these graphics cards in the natural environment of the Acer graphics card. A terrible airflow case. <laughs> And what better way to asphyxiate a graphics card than drop it in a pre-build? Now I did initially want to drop it in an Acer Loser Nitro Suck Face Edition, but I can't find mine, so I guess this Asus pre-built will have to do. This system does have all the hallmarks of pre-built DIMM, we've got a complete lack of ventilation on the front. It does have a teeny bit of ventilation on the side, but I am gonna like semi-obscure it just to get a worst case scenario, I guess. But aside from that, there's nothing on the top, and the only case fan is this tiny little thing on the back. So let's see if Acer's hybrid cooler design works any better in here than a normal open air design. Oh, what a beauty! Now you can see that Asus seems to think a blower style cooler is the best for this case design, which makes sense. It's not a very high airflow case design. Uh, but let's drop the Acer card in here and see what kind of thermals we get before comparing it to that 3060. And what I've also done here, which may be kind of overkill, but I've leaned this glass panel over the side of this ventilation. It's still open, air can still get in there, but it is going to restrict it just a little bit so that we get just proper, proper asphyxiation going on. But after starting up the system, which sounds like firing up a motorbike from the 70s, the temperature started off aggressively. Well, it's just been a couple of seconds in the GPU murder Matron, and we're already close to the temperatures we were seeing at load on the open test bed. Obviously, it's gonna run hotter here, but how much hotter? Now, I've bumped it up to 1440p because we have a much slower CPU in here. I think it's got an 11400F in it and I want the GPU to be utilized fully. So there you go, 1440p. And you can see it was a good call considering that the CPU is struggling even with this. Now I'm also curious how much the graphics card's impacting the CPU temperature. So we gotta keep an eye on that as well. Okay, so it's been a reasonably long time and that isn't going very poorly considering the, <laughs> the, the, the situation. 74 degrees Celsius on the graphics card. It's very noisy, but the temperature is good. 
and then CPU wise we've got 77 ish degrees Celsius. And after half an hour with the RTX 3060 in there we got some interesting results. The open air cooler after ages is running at a higher temperature uh, which checks out it was also running hotter on the open air test bed uh, but it hasn't really impacted our CPU temperature much. It's still in the same region. Which got me thinking, how much would that temperature drop with the stock blower GTX 1660 Ti that came in this system? A graphics card that uses quite a bit less power we're getting very similar CPU temperatures and all that heat's also being dumped out of the back of the case. So it seems like in this case, even the, the open air style 3060 wasn't having much of an impact on the CPU temperatures. So at the end of the day, Acer's graphics card doesn't seem too terrible. Until you take the price into account, I paid 450 Canadian dollars for it, making it the most expensive 7600 I could find. You can get the XT for that. For a card I can best describe as adequate but noisy. But I guess they've got to pay Alma's royalties somehow. Which brings me to the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed the video. Maybe watch another one. And until the next video, bye bye.